My name is Ben Stack and I'm the CEO of the Stacks Law Group. Um, and um, my purpose in coming here today is, is not so much to talk big picture as some of the other uh, people have spoken today, although perhaps we will, but, um, but mine is a bit more specific around our business um, and, and some of the things we do in our organisation and just some of the things we see is happening, has happened and continues to happen in the market um, in, in terms of the ways that lawyers organise themselves to uh, provide legal services. So um, in particular, I, I, you know, I'm going to look at and talk to the idea of lawyers and law firms working as part of uh, organised networks. So from a regulatory perspective, uh, there are broadly three types of private law practice. There's sole practitioner, there is partnership, and there is uh, incorporated legal practice, be it public or private. Um, but beyond that, there is a multitude of ways that law firms actually work together to deliver services for clients or to, um, to organise themselves. Um, at, at one end of the spectrum, there is uh, very simple referral type networks that may be formal or informal, and most law firms will have some, something to that effect in place, uh, where they're exchanging essentially client inquiries, particularly around matter types they don't practice. So that's at sort of one end of the spectrum. And then we have, uh, you see in the in the legal marketplace, uh, knowledge networks where firms are connecting for the purpose of exchanging information and perhaps running private CPD. Um, you then see chambers practices, which is really people, uh, firms, uh, you know, as a network uh, coming together to share premises and facilities. Um, and then you start to come down the spectrum and you see more integrated networks of firms that, for instance, might go to market under a common brand. And there's many examples of this in Australia, um, historically as well as today, from networks of state-based partnerships, which go to market as a national brand, um, to uh, examples of the global networks and the Swiss Veer In models, which some of the big firms have, and indeed um, PwC from the sp uh, speaker earlier today. Um, you know, the Australian partnership is part of the global network of partnerships at PwC. Um, and our organisation, Stacks Law Firm, fits into this category, and I'll talk to that in a moment. And then at the, at the very other end of the spectrum is where you have uh, networks of firms that have that full financial integration, which, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes are one firm, but for reasons potentially, perhaps regulatory reasons, are actually structured as with independent firms working together. So um, there's lots of reasons why firms might choose to work together in a network structure, but at the end of the day, it's typically around reducing co costs, improving outcomes for clients, um, gaining some competitive advantage, uh, et cetera. Um, I think it's interesting and we're seeing a lot of the firms, a lot of the people that are speaking as part of this commission of inquiry are coming from firms that you know, would be regarded as being at the leading edge of the profession. And, and as I look at those, there's one network kind of idea that seems to be uh, growing um, is this, uh, the network of freelance and highly skilled lawyers. And of course, that's really being enabled largely by the great new technologies we can all access. The combination of cloud computing and very powerful and, and small devices with increasing broadband capabilities means that you can have mobile workers and you can have remote teams. And I think it's that technology which, which is fueling a, a new kind of network of, of freelance lawyers. And that's allowing law firms, a lot of the firms even Hive Legal who spoke this morning and others, um, uh, enabling them to look at their labour models the labour model of their firm, how their firm is organised around uh, human resources, which I think is a, a new development um, and, and something that's very uh, interesting and it's a developing area. And there's also a lot of talk about outsourcing in the profession, which isn't a new phenomenon, but the ways and things that firms can now outsource is, is different and expanding. And I think what you're seeing is firms at the leading edge just uh, it's thinking very deeply around what are their core activities being those that they want to keep in-house. Uh, versus those activities which uh, are non-core and which, if you believe some management professionals, should be outsourced. Um, but certainly firms are, are looking at, at strategically outsourcing. So again, I think it's an um, interesting area. To talk just a little bit about networks, um, I think people who uh, read about technology uh, hear a lot about the exponential pace of change and they, people cite Moore's law being the, the doubling of processing power in computers every two years, which is a law that's largely held true since 1965. But in the space of networks, there's another law that people talk about, Metcalfe's law. And Metcalfe's law is used to describe this phenomenon of network effects, which in, in basic terms is the idea that the more people that join a network, the more valuable the network is to all the people that are already in it. Um, 
and you know Metcast law is specific to the telecommunication space and they talk about the square of the number of users being the, the network effect. So the classic example being the telephone. Um, if one person owns a telephone, there's not much use, but as soon as two or three, then you know, once the third person buys a telephone, then there's more value for the first two. Notwithstanding that the person, the third person who bought the phone probably didn't do it to increase the value to the others in the network, but they did it as a matter of course. So that's a classic network effect. Um, and you look at other examples, social media, Facebook um, being a classic of a, a network effect. The more people that join, the more valuable the network. Um, and I think that network phenomenon, uh, you know, can, uh, can play out in every industry, but it certainly can in law. And, that, uh, and, and that's very much a philosophy we have in our organisation. So um, that brings me to Stacks Law Firm. So our, our organisation began as a uh, sole practice. My grandfather, E.R. Stack, opened a practice in Wingham in 1931 at the height of the Depression and um, had, a, you know, had a, a successful business there. He had three sons join him in the 60s and 70s uh, and they opened an office in the regional centre of Taree. Uh, and as the firm grew, they had good staff come and work for them. And as staff moved on, rather than just lose them to the firm, they entered into and, and ended up being a network of um, partnerships was really the model. When the legal industry here liberalised and allowed full incorporation of legal practices in 2002, um, they took the opportunity to change the structure of the organisation. And so it became a network of incorporated legal practices as it is today, uh, all trading under a, a common brand. Um, and there are, we have, there are 27 offices uh, throughout New South Wales and Southern Queensland. Uh, our business is very focused in the consumer private client and, uh, and SME marketplaces, so what some people would call small law, uh, but that's very much uh, our focus. Um, and the firms in our group over time, you know, the network has grown in, in size and capability. And over time, those firms have become more closely connected in a sort of organic way to, the, to where we are today, where we have a a head office team, which I, I'm part of, um, which provides a number of shared corporate services to the firms in the group, effectively outsourced in some areas, outsourced services, uh, a lot around uh, technology and systems, um, marketing and marketing systems, knowledge management, knowledge management systems, and, and group by procurement and, and all the logical things you can do when you've got more people in a network. And we, we believe that there are some very positive network effects that, that come from that, um, that all the firms in our group benefit from. Um, and, uh, and my own view on that is that, uh, and the research shows that it is a very fragmented profession, uh, not just in Australia, but particularly in Australia, there are a lot of sole practice firms. And if you look at the small law segment of the market where we play, that's especially true. Um, and with all the challenges that are, are that, you know, the new business environment brings and the new technology that comes, I think it's going to be increasingly hard for small practices that aren't prepared to very much deepen their expertise and, and specialise in an area. Um, and, uh, and we see, you know, our, what we're able to do is support firms to deepen their expertise within, uh, within the protection of a network of firms that allows for them to, to you know, have some certainty around, uh, you know, their, the, the future of their practice. So that's, uh, that's really our business. And how do you see the future of the profession? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, uh, there's been a few observations made by different people. I think, um, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen in the next two years. I think there's a classic quote from Bill Gates that we tend to overestimate what will happen in the next two years and underestimate what will happen in the next 10. And I think that's probably true of the profession. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, take the view of the, the speaker before me that, um, it is about tolerance. Uh, it's about the, the lawyers, I think, that will succeed and there'll always be a place for lawyers and the lawyers, particularly in the medium term, are those that are open to learning non-legal skills uh, and working out how they can use those to provide better services to clients. And they may be in the areas of technological competence. Um, but, but I think it's pretty clear that as the technology becomes more capable, um, the lawyers that are prepared to augment the way they work with new technology are going to be more successful than the ones who decide not to augment the way they work with new technology. And, and who knows, ultimately, whether or not some of the predictions that have been made will come true about, you know, uh, you know the, the capability of machines and, and where that will be 20 years from now. I don't make an observation on that, but I, um, but I do think lawyers that aren't prepared to, to learn non-legal skills and augment uh, their practice with technology will find it very difficult in the in the medium term.